right, welcome to one of the last technical sessions at Summit. Glad everyone made it here. Everyone looks alive. Um, I'm Kyle Adams. I'm a solutions engineer extraordinaire with Alfresco. Um, I do not expect to have your undivided attention. It is Friday, and some people went out and had drinks last night. Um, but I do encourage you to tweet about the session, uh, and that's more along the lines of not having your undivided attention. It's not because you're tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so what we're going to talk about today is the art of the upgrade. Uh, I think everyone in the Alfresco community has run into some kind of upgrade challenges um, in the history of their Alfresco experience. So one of my objectives today is to arm you with the strategy and tactics you need to take on an upgrade and make that successful. Um, some of the things that we won't cover are customizations, uh, AVM, because those can be completely separate uh, discussions. We can go on for hours and hours about those. So this is going to be all about the core repository upgrade. So uh, the art of the upgrade. So I'm going to be using quotes from The Art of War. So strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. And tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. So let's break that down a little bit. Tactics are the actual means used to gain an, an objective, while strategy is the overall campaign plan. So we're going to prepare for battle over the course of this presentation. So my upgrade strategy that I've used for multiple support cases, it can be anywhere from a 2.2 upgrade to a 3.3 .3 upgrade, all the way up to 4.1 and now 4.2, is that I need to accurately predict how my Alfresco instance is going to behave throughout the upgrade process. The fact that we're getting to 4.2 is merely the end goal. So if we know exactly how Alfresco is going to react, what are the changes that we're going to expect from, from segment to segment of the upgrade, then I think we're going to be a whole lot more successful. So here are the few tactics that I use. Uh, they're simple steps. Prepare. This is a big one. Uh, execute the upgrade. Monitor the progress of the upgrade. And validate afterwards. And what we'll find is that 80% of the work is going to be done in the preparation phase. Another quote, to not prepare is the greatest of crimes. To be prepared beforehand for any contingency is the greatest of virtues. Also from Art of War. <laughs> so what we need to prepare for firsthand is know exactly what the current state of our repository is. Start by getting a table count of all the rows, of, of all the tables in our database. Size and number of the files in the content store size of our leucine or solar indices, uh, custom content models, custom process definitions, installed modules, whether they come with Alfresco or whether they're a third party or custom, and other customizations that you might have included in your product. Uh, the next step is to know exactly what the upgrade path is. So if you're on 2.2, obviously you need to jump to 2.2.8, then to 3.4, and then you can jump to 4.2. Um, and the key thing to remember is that you have to go to the latest service pack. That's really, really important. Because these service packs, they contain a lot of hot fixes that's going to help you along the way. And I'll point out some of those towards the end of the presentation. And you can also find this diagram and, the, and verbiage around the upgrade path on docs.alfresco.com. Um, the next step, we need to back up our production instance. It's not enough that we test the upgrade on a subset of your, product, your production data set. We need that production data set because that's going to react differently from a, a smaller subset. So running, running the upgrade on a smaller data set may take a little, bit, a little bit less time. And when you run that upgrade in production, you're throwing in extra variables that are unknowns. We're not going to do that. We're going to know exactly how it's going to react throughout all of the upgrade process. The next thing we want to do is to back up Lucene or Solar and back up the content store. And we're going to restore that into a brand new environment. 
No in-place upgrades, zero in-place upgrades. So a lot of questions I get are, you know, our production content store is freaking huge. How, how are we gonna back that up and restore it into a lower environment? We just don't have that much storage. And you know, while people say storage is cheap, it's not that cheap. So what, what happens when we run into a content store that's just too large to replicate in a lower environment? Um, I, I say it's no, there's no excuse. Um, I've actually built a shell script that will query your database, get all of the content URLs for the, um, uh, for the items in your content store, and it will replicate that content store with small files. So that should be able to cut down the size. So no excuse to not be able to replicate your, your production data set. Um, and a word of caution, only use this for testing. If you open a ticket with Alfresco support, I used to be a tech technical team lead, by the way, um, they're gonna tell you that's unsupported. It's absolutely true. Unsupported, uh, don't use this in production, only for testing upgrades. Uh, the next thing that I, I like to do is for every segment of my upgrade path, I'm gonna install a brand new version. So my example is that we're gonna start on 334, so that's gonna require us to install 334, 335, and 4.2. And for each of these, I can throw them on the same box, it doesn't matter, but the important thing is that we're pointing to that replicated production data set, so we're pointing to a restored version of the production content store, whether it's the large content store that we copied over or whether it's the mocked up one. And we're gonna point to a common database that we copied from production. And again, this is not your live production database. This is one that you backed up from production and restored into another schema. And of course, don't forget the license file. I always do this when I run upgrades. I'll execute the upgrade and I'll completely forget that I need to request that license file. So rule of thumb, for every minor version, you're gonna need a new license file. And again, do not perform an in-place upgrade. Say it one more time, do not perform an in-place upgrade, please. And the reason behind that is that you can roll back easily and if you do an in-place upgrade in production, what happens if thing goes, things go horribly awry? You have to roll back, you lose, uh, you lose up time, your end users are mad. So the thought about doing another instance on the side is that you're, you're doing this upgrade on the side, your users are still using your old system, and then when everything's pristine and you give them the thumbs up on the new system that's been upgraded, you just flip them over. Simple, right? I suppose. <laughs> uh, so prepare patches. Um, so you can find all of the patches that Alfresco is going to execute inside the patch services context XML. This is a good file to get to know. I mean, of course, not all of these are going to run during every segment of your upgrade, but this is where you go when you want to look for the bean references, look for the class names, and here are the Java docs for each of those classes. Uh, still unsure? Well, it, we just installed those three installations, right, for 3.3.4, 3.3.5, and 4.2. Run, run an out-of-the-box upgrade, zero content, zero customizations, and ramp up some of the logging for, for the patches. Um, and what will happen is that you'll see all the upgrade grades that, all the patches that are, that are being run, um, whether they're SQL or whether they're Java-based, they'll be outputted to the log file. So once you do that, you can review each of the log files from the different segments of the upgrades and you'll know exactly what's being run, how long it's taking. And then you can multiply that times, you know, the size of your, your expected content store and database size. Uh, customizations. Um, for, the, for testing the upgrade, you only really need the bare minimum. Um, specifically, the content model. If you start up your system without the proper content model, it's going to say, oh, can't find this content model, not going to start, sorry. So that's the absolute bare minimum. 
tools for monitoring. So there are a lot of things that we need to monitor during the upgrade process. If you stick with the logs, you're not gonna get enough information. But that's a good place to start. So, of course, there's the trusty tail. I hope everyone's uh, running Linux. It's awesome. Maybe not. Windows, Windows fanboys here? No. It's, it's okay. That's okay. I, I, won't, I won't put it against you. We still like you. So, tail logs, text editors for the Windows guys. Um, and if anybody's used Splunk, it's really awesome. So, what you can do with Splunk is you can point it towards a specific log file. And you can say, if I see an occurrence of the word error or exception, send me an email notification. So you don't have to sit there and watch paint dry. You can go off and do something more important. And if something goes horribly awry with our, your upgrade, you can come back because you saw that uh, this, some instance of you know, an exception happened in the logs. Another important thing is monitoring the JVM. My personal favorite is Yorkit. This will allow you to look at the, the running threads, and will allow you to look at the CPU telemetry, and will allow you to look at uh, memory utilization. So it gives you a good 360 degree view of what's going on in your JVM. And lastly, database queries. This is really important because sometimes you can't see what's going on in the database by looking at the JVM. It's just not the way it works. So, just fall back to your vendor-specific tools, uh, MySQL Workbench, SQL Developer, PG Admin, uh, uh, SQL Server Management Studio, whatever floats your boat. Um, if you're getting really desperate, you can add uh, java.sql in your log4j file and quickly toggle that on and off. My only warning is that if you do that, you're gonna get a huge log file, so just be prepared. Um, and hardware and OS. So you need something to monitor the CPU memory disk if you're not using your kit. Um, so top and mom and for the Windows guys, process explorer. All right, so let's move to execute. This is pretty simple. Uh, so what we do is we start the, the, the process by pointing our, our 334 instance to, um, to that production data set that we replicated turn it up, make sure that uh, the environment's up and running, do a few smoke tests, maybe do a few uh, functional tests as well. Um, shut down the instance and we're, we're good to go with the next step of the upgrade. So at that point, we're gonna start up the 335 instance that's pointing to the same content store and database and start reviewing the logs. So now we come to monitor. This can get a little bit tricky because again, looking at the logs is not enough. So based on the logging output of your dry run, you should be able to see some of the thing, same things happening. You, you should see patches X, Y, Z executing. You should see SQL scripts running. And you should know what the expected output should be afterwards. So what happens if the logging output appears to be stalled? Because that does happen. You know, when you run certain upgrades, you know, the last logging statement may sit there for about 10 minutes maybe 30 minutes, maybe a few hours, depending on how large your Alfresco installation may be. Stalled, uh, Dikembe says, not in my house. So the next thing we could do is jump over to the JVM. So fire up your kit. We'll be able to see exactly what thread is, uh, is currently uh, running. So it could be uh, a SQL execution, it could be a patch running, whatever it may be. But it'll give you a good idea exactly of what's going on during that stalled process in your logs. So what happens if it appears that, that a specific method call is stalled when you're looking at your kit? The next best thing is not to, not to worry, but Dikembe says, no, 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 not today. So take a look at the SQL queries. So this is where you're really gonna see a lot of activity. You might, for, for instance, for 4.1, there's a specific uh, SQL uh, patch that runs that, that removes a column. And if it's for a specific table, it could have millions and millions of rows. So that could take a long time. But from the logs, it just appears that it's sitting there 
for in one place for an hour, maybe two hours. And in your kit, it looks like it's just sitting there at one specific method call. So this is a good place to go. Um, and again, if you're brave, you could add java.sql to your custom log for day properties file and toggle that on and off. You have to be quick though. And finally, validate. So this is all about making sure that that segment of the upgrade was successful. Do a few smoke tests, run some functional tests, run some tests that are specific for your use cases. And if you're on the later versions of 4.x, you can leverage something called WebDrone. Uh, if you uh, went to any of uh, the talks that Gab, Gab uh, presented, you probably talked about this. So this will run a full functional test that we use in-house at Alfresco, and that'll allow you to run an automated regression test. All right, and for each segment of that upgrade, you're just gonna repeat the same process between execute, monitor, and validate. Now we're gonna come to the gotchas. Uh, this is something that I, I personally experience a lot of times. You, you get to know these very, very intimately when you worked in the support world. So this is, is a very huge patch. Uh, uh, fix ACL inheritance patch, and this can long, run for a very long time. But if you have cyclical ACLs, which can happen, I don't know why, maybe it's a race condition, it'll appear as if we're in an infinite loop. And that is indeed what's happening. So eventually you'll run into a stack over, overflow exception. Um, and again, we're, we're talking about moving to the latest service pack in certain upgrade segments. So um, we know in 3, 4, 13, this has been addressed. So have no fear. And this is the following JIRA if you want to look up some of the details. Another gotcha, orf orphan nodes. Anybody experienced orphan, orphan nodes before? Four or five. It's pretty nasty. So basically what happens if you need to re-index, you're going to get stopped dead in your tracks. So you'll receive uh, invalid node ref exception. Node, node does not exist. Um, so you can identify orphan nodes with this long query that you don't have to read right now, but you can go back and look at it later. Also, you can find associations to deleted nodes. That will also cause that node, uh, not, node does not exist exception. But one word of caution, do not attempt to fix these by hacking the database. Never touch the database, please. Don't do it. Think of it as a black box. You don't need to touch it. But in Service Pack 414, we added something to detect these orphan nodes and uh, associate, associations to deleted nodes. So it'll detect them, and it'll also fix them via Java. So no, no more hacking the database. And of course, you can find them at this JIRA. Another gotcha, nodes without transactions. That can happen. So basically what will happen in your upgrade process, you'll eventually run into an exception that will say that you have violated some constraint in your database. So what you can do to find these is run this query. And what you can do is, again, be cautious because you're not allowed to touch the database, but work with Alfresco Consulting or Alfresco Support. They'll help you identify these, uh, these transactions and they'll, they'll guide you through the process by updating these and reassociating them with a certain transaction that already exists. Uh, Long-running patches. These are the instances where you think, you know, Alfresco's doing fine, you're looking at the logs, it just stops. It appears to just stop, but we all know that Dikembe knows that they aren't just stopped. So some of these you can run asynchronously and as scheduled jobs. So you can flip a few of these parameters, the, the current expression, and uh, run as scheduled job flag, and you can run those asynchronously. And this specific one is for 2.x to 3.x, and it's migrating the version store from lightweight to the version 2 store. Next, we have the content URL converter, convert, converter patch. 
Uh, this is when the ALF content URL table uh, came to fruition. Um, and this uh, is for specifically the 3.2.x uh, upgrade. And you could do the same thing here, set cron expressions, batch sizes, thread counts, and run it as an asynchronous schedule job. And here's that SQL script that I was speaking of. No deleted .sql. It's a doozy. And that's during your 4.1.x upgrade. Basically what's happening is it renames alf underscore node to uh, t underscore alf node. Um, and then it recreates the alf node table without the node deleted column. And then what it's going to do, it's going to loop through all the results of that temporary table and then er insert them back into the alf node table. So if you got millions and tens of millions or hundreds of millions of items in the alf node table, this one can take a long time. So this one's really good to uh, monitor your, your SQL activity, so through, through your database tools. Um, also, you can have a look at, the, at your kit. And the last gotcha is don't forget to update your database statistics. So specifically for Oracle, make sure you update your statistics without histograms. That's really important because um, that reduces bind peaking behavior. And for MySQL, I believe it's optimized table. I'm not sure what the equivalent is to uh, for Postgres and uh, SQL Server also has an equivalent to update stats. In summary, so this is all about being meticulous. You can't just run an upgrade and expect it to work. Alfresco does QA to upgrade process, but we can't replicate your, your own data sets. So that's the key difference. We can't replicate your data sets. We can't replicate your customizations. So, so these are the key areas. Be meticulous, have attention to detail, leave nothing up to mystery. So that's the idea of the whole preparation phase and knowing exactly what's gonna happen from point A to point B. We know exactly what's going to happen when we execute uh, upgrade from 334 to 335 because we tested it a billion times. And don't be afraid to fail because we've, again, we've uh, took, taken a copy of, produ of your production data set and restored it into a lower environment. Nothing, it's not going to hurt anyone if you fail, so do it 10 times over, do it 20 times over, get it right. Um, so another quote, know thyself. Know thy enemy, a thousand battles, a thousand victories. This really should be know thy alfresco, know thy alfresco upgrade. <laughs> a thousand upgrades, a thousand victories. And last quote for you, the, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. So this process really shouldn't be a headache. By the time we've tested everything backwards and forwards, that final upgrade in production should be smooth. And I'm Kyle Adams, solutions engineer out of Fresco. If you have any questions, uh, come talk to me, email me here, send me tweets, uh, whatever it may be. Thank you. Um, any questions? I think we've got plenty of time. Um, hello, thank you. It was it was a very useful. It is a very useful talk. Uh, one question about the versioning numbering. You may have ta talked to people about it before. Like we are running four one four dot one, which mm -hmm. is hot bad. And the, you, I noticed in the diagram you said to upgrade to four dot two, you need to be at four dot one five. Right. So so. That diagram has not been updated in the docs. It actually should be 416. Uh. Uh, so if I think I understand where you're going with that is that uh, you need to upgrade to the latest service pack. So if you're on 41, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. you need to go to 416 before you jump to 4.2. Okay. No, that's the, that my, was my question. From 4.4, for example, going to 4.6, do I, is that, is that, is that considered an upgrade or it's just a... Um, I like to consider it as applying a service pack. Uh -huh. 
because the word upgrade is very scary and it scares a lot of customers. So in the support world, when I apply a service pack, um, I, I would never use the word upgrade. So it, it is the same exact process and I would follow the same exact process. I would still be as detailed, um, but it is a, a less risky upgrade. Oh, I see. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> I, have a question. I have a question. Could you explain how, what's the rule about going, what are the numbering and nomenclature means, like 414? Four, when do you go to those minor numbers versus the major number? How, how, what's that logic? Uh, so service packs are exactly what they sound. They're service packs. They're a collection of hot fixes. Um, and in the service pack, we don't release any new functionality. It's only bug fixes. Uh, so for instance, the reason why we moved from 4.0 to 4.1 was because we introduced the cloud syncing ability. And that's, that's brand new code, that's brand new functionality. That's why we changed the, the ver minor version number to 4.1. So uh, that's the same reason why we iterated from 4.1 to 4.2 because we introduced a lot of new code. From four to five, a lot of that is honestly gonna be on the marketing side. So if there's a lot of new functionality coming out, uh, what's happening in our competitor space, if a lot of people are moving to a 5.x version, we may move up there as well. But it's, it's probably gonna be, it, it will probably entail a lot of new functionality or something that's mind-blowing. More mind-blowing than 4.2, <laughs> which is still cool, right? So I have a question about um, upgrading from 3.4 to okay. 4.2. Sounds like it's a fairly easy path, but would you recommend updating the 3.4 version to the latest service pack before updating or upgrading to 4.2? Uh, absolutely, and especially if you're on a lower service pack. Mm -hmm. um, just because there are a few of those critical uh, service pack that I mentioned in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the slides. Yep. So the rule of thumb is always to go to the latest service pack because you're going to get all of the hot fixes that other customers uh, requested. And those wouldn't be included though in the 4.2? Like they're needed before you go to 4.2? Um, it, that's usually in, in t uh, that's usually a timing thing. Mm -hmm. So those hot fixes will eventually roll up to 4.2, but if someone requested a hot fix on 3.4 a week before 4.2 sure. came out, they obviously wouldn't be in that okay, thank in you. that product. Um, uh, we're doing um, uh, a side by side upgrade, and we had to course freeze all of our content you know working with our content in the older version and while we went through the process do you have any recommendations for how to do that differential um, between you know if people have to keep working the old system just because it's taking too long sure. how, to start, how to bring all that content into the newer version sure um, so one of my colleagues Tony De La Fuentes uh, he sits right across from me in the Atlanta office he created this uh, cool thing called the ba uh, Alfresco Backup and Recovery Tool, and that'll allow you to do differential backups. So you could use that for something a little bit more than just a backup. You could use it for upgrade processes. So take your, your differentials from your production environment and restore them into, into your upgrade environment that you're testing. I've been working in enterprise content management sessions for a while, mm -hmm. and so far we have been doing in-place upgrade, and I would like to understand why you said no for in-place upgrade, upgrade. Is it because of the time it takes, or is it because of the upgrade failures? It, it's because of the risk, or the potential of the risk. Risk for failure? Cor correct. So your upgrade could be perfectly fine doing it in place, but it's that undetermined factor that, that you don't know um, that's really risky. So if you, if you happen to be successful with your in-place upgrade, cool. But you know, one because time out of 
20 times or 100 times, you're going to run into an issue and have to roll back. So uh, the, the scenario here is we have various environments which mimics production architecture. So we do this in-place upgrade many times, dev, QA, UAD, finally in production. Mm -hmm. uh, so I understand that because the only thing that I consider your idea of not to do in-place upgrade is the availability, system availability. If you are OK with downtime more than a few hours, uh, so I'm kind of contradicting what you were saying. Mm -hmm. uh, so there must be a reason more than what I just said. So I don't, I don't know if you have more elaborate uh, sure. discussion on that. Sure. So if, you've, if you have a production data set that's replicated in lower environments and you're testing that upgrade in those lower environments, then it's a little less risky to do that in-place upgrade. Another instance is if you're running on VMware and you do that in-place upgrade, you could easily roll back to a previous snapshot. So that might be a, another instance where it's okay. Thank you. I'm interested in that um, the content generator. Sure. Um, when you create the content into your test environment, are are those links to those to those content? Is, does it actually bring up real data? I mean, fake data, but real. Does it actually bring it up? Sure. So I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail on how that works. Um, it, it's a basic shell script that executes. Uh, say, we'll we'll just use MySQL for this scenario. It'll it'll execute the MySQL um, bash um, scripts, and I'll execute a query to get all the content URLs from the database, and I'll replicate the files on the file system. And then when you start up Alfresco and you pull up that document, it'll be that piece of mock content. And typically, I, I like to use like one KB file, so it might have the word test or upgrade in it. And so you would create a content for each type, or does it change all of your types even to it's, that one, say, PDF or whatever? So for the mock content, I, I create a new file for each MIME type. So there's okay. a mock content for a PDF, for a Word document, for a text file, and et cetera. OK, thanks. Um, my question is mix of upgrade and migration. Like if my current production environment is running on MySQL, and now if I want to move to 4.2 on SQL Server, what should be my? So the scenario is you want to move from MySQL to SQL Server. Um, that is going to be a big ETL job. Um, honestly, I would get Alfresco Consulting involved to help certify that ETL job. Because if you don't get the database right, then your the the rest of the upgrade is not going to be right. So um, another option is to s just stand up a new instance and migrate the data itself and leave the database. Okay. Um, we're in the process of getting ready to do a, a major upgrade from many releases back. Um, so when one of the things that you had mentioned is that you install Scratch um, the first step in the, the process. So um, would you then, after you install that fresh set, say, of 3.4, would you then go and copy your content store, um, copy your database, or export your database and import it into the new database? And then regenerate your indexes, or how do you uh, how do you handle the whole Lucene index on the on the test environment that you pulled your production data down? Now? Sure. So usually I like to keep one set of that content a content store. There's no real need to replicate that. I may keep a backup copy just in case I need to restore it, um, and then I would uh, I would put that. Uh, that next step in the installation process, I would point that instance to that content store. As far as ind indexes go, um, the last thing you want to do is re-index. So if you happen to run into an issue where uh, you're, you're, you have index in inconsistency, then uh, unfortunately with Lucene, you have to do that full re-index. But uh, I always like to start off with a golden set of Lucene index indexes. So. If you could run that re-index in your production environment before you start the upgrade process, that's a good starting point. 
So you can then just, so there'd be no problems with just taking your content store and your index, the whole thing, and moving it over. Right, right. Okay. And, and again, when you restore that over into your test environment, you, you don't have to change that content store. You don't have to copy it over for, for each segment in the upgrade. You can point each installation to the same content store and set of indexes. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you're doing an upgrade and part of that is uh, changing from Lucene to Solar, um, do you even need to worry about the, if you know you, you need to do a full re-index, do you even need to worry about the index throughout the upgrade until the very last step? Uh, so what you could do is uh, set the index recovery mode to, I believe the option is no index. Um, but again, you'll have to flip one of the uh, system parameters to say don't do strict ch uh, checks. Because what will happen is that uh, Alfresco will check the Lucene indexes against the ALF transactions table and see if there are any inconsistencies. So if you're in a scenario where you're migrating away from Lucene, forget about the Lucene indexes because you're going to start over anyways with solar. Any other questions? All right. Well, if you have any other questions, uh, come grab me in the hall or send me an email. I'll be glad to chat about upgrades. Thanks, guys.